This segment is being sponsored by Capital Sportsman. back everyone this week's picture week being brought to you by flowers deer processing they're not a garden center anymore it's deer processing they are gearing up aren't they brandon they're ready to go they got them knife sharp and stainless is cleaned and, off and you heard now jim told us they got a brand new machine that puts out snack sticks if you if you bet out the flowers you know what i'm talking about about venison snack sticks well these actually make the snack sticks without that um, what you casing. The there's casing. no casing on it. So there's much. no casing on it. So guys, if you didn't like the casing last year or the year before, now you can get it with through this new machine with no casing whatsoever, and it'll be smoked just like the ones that we've been doing in the past. So they're out there at 4550 Eaton's Creek Road, and if you see Miss Deborah Flowers, tip your hat because she actually runs the whole show, boys. <laughs> so, all right, this week's pictures. Let's take a look at this one. Is uh, oh, this is Mr. Sam Moore. Sam was out there with us. This is the guy we were telling you about, the young man, 12 years old. He uh, shot his first time to ever shoot a gun. Period. And we put him on it. You put us on the guide. I was brave enough to be there with him, and uh, we took birds. I mean, the first look at that shot. Smile. Look at this smile. That, that's what it's that's that's what what it's about. That's one that you can say that boy's got a hook in that corner <laughs> of that mouth. He is done. He's toast. And his mother was right there with us, and uh, she did an awesome job too. So, thank you, Sam, for that picture. Our next picture. That looks like murderer's row, I'm telling you, man. <laughs> Every one of those people need to go to jail. <laughs> we, we took this at the farm just after we left the shoot on Sunday evening our, yeah. uh, when we went after church, and uh, Andy Coker cooked for us. We had a big time, and uh, that's my two little ones are there in the middle, but that's just a, a big group of us having a, having a big time. We had a great time. Uh, uh, Jack and uh, uh, Jesse? Uh, that's Jack, Jack and Jesse Reynolds there with us. Jack is uh, he's uh, my partner that works with me on uh, managing property yep, and problems. stuff like that mm -hmm. and, and uh, my lease partner and um, so me and me and Jack have hunted and, and uh, played music together for a long time uh, and that's his son Jesse and yeah, uh, Andy Coker's in there and so uh, there's, there's the whole Moore, family around Elizabeth there. Elizabeth <laughs> Moore, that's uh, Sam Moore's uh, mother, she was there uh, also and then of course you and I were there. So. Yeah. Uh, we, we just had to round it out but we appreciate that. You can send your pictures to us here. 474 James Robinson Parkway, Nashville, Tennessee, 37219. Or better yet, just Facebook them to us. And I know they're a little short this week. We only wanted to show two because we got a lot to show tonight. And so we just did a couple, and uh, we wanted to get straight to Miss Carla. Carla is, uh, Gilmore, is the marketing director for Davidson Farmers Co-op. Am I right? That is correct. And also uh, assisting with manage management as well. Oh, okay. So yeah. if Miss Laura's not there, you 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 the one we need That's to talk right. to. Oh, That's right. I like that. <laughs> well, you just I want to say first off, you just got back from Alaska. I did absolutely. Now the co-op did this. They gave a pro or, or a trip away to a uh, manager or whatever the criteria might be. Uh, but Miss Laura was supposed to be the recipient. That's correct. And couldn't go. Correct. Which is blessed you. That's right. Because <laughs> right. it yeah. just trickled down. There's that trickle down economics there. That's right. Didn't want it to get away. No. So, you know. so how was Alaska? Uh, beautiful. That's it my is second beautiful. time going. I can't wait to go back. Um, you know, it was great being with people that have never been before because they were like, what do you want to do? What's great? What would you do again? And so it was nice to be able to help them out, but also get to experience new things. Did you go fishing? I didn't. What? Mm. No, not this time. But that mm. when I go back, I am. I've been twice. I went fishing both times. I I go back another time. I'm fishing. <laughs> you gotta go fish. You gotta go fishing. <laughs> just, you, well, you can't pass up Alaska. But did you see any killer whales? I did not see any killer whales. I saw humpbacks. Humpbacks. So, yeah. You know, it's a small, uh, like a small time frame there when the killers are in and yeah. the humpbacks are in and then the humpbacks are moving in, the killers are moving out, so there's a small time frame there. It is. Uh, so you got to hit it just right. 
whichever sure. one you want to see. Did yeah. you see anything else other than the whales? Uh, we saw seals and stuff like that, but I mean nothing. Are they not funny? They are very funny. They're very <laughs> relaxed and you know they're very used to the cruise ships and people just going by. Uh, we saw a lot of bald eagles, so that was really neat. Did you fly to Seattle to go out? That's correct. Uh, did you ever go to the Pier 54 like I suggested and eat? I did not. Ooh. When I got off that plane, I was ready to. I was ready to get ready my to hotel room. <laughs> uh, we went to Pier 54, and, and we talked about sea lions. Those things are huge. James, they you ever are. seen a sea lion? No. That thing's mon it, but me and you together won't make one. <laughs> they're huge. <laughs> but we, they, they're all lined up on the wharf, and, and this wharf you walk down to go to the Pier 54 uh, to the restaurant. But they're lined up on the wharf. They don't bother anybody. They just, you know, it's there. <laughs> <laughs> well, one comes flying through the water and jumps and knocks two of them off the other end. And he just kind of sits there and just, you know, fits right in. So, <laughs> great, great time. Uh, I'm glad you got to go. Uh, but we're going to talk about the co-op. I am being inundated along with Brandon about is it too late to put in food plots? Is it too late to do this? Is it too late to do that? Hey, I just got back, you know, and this and that work-related stuff. It, it is not too late. That's correct. No. Tennessee, we're blessed. We have a long growing season. Yes. And uh, Kentucky as well. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a long growing season. I say anytime you can get in there and till that soil, right now would be a great time. Correct, it is. So what, what would be your suggestion? We get a guy to go ahead and till his soil. What, what is some of the suggestions from the co-op then? What I like to tell people is go ahead and get an idea, something that you would like to grow. Then what you need to do is you need to come in, bring me a little bit of soil in one of these bags and say, hey, I got a soil sample. Can you send it off for me? This is what I would like to grow. Mm -hmm. I'll have your results back in less than a week. It's only about $14 to do it. Literally the best, cheapest investment insurance you want it to is. do. It is. It is. So it's many great. people don't realize the importance of the soil test. They go in and they, they turn everything, they buy the best seed, and they buy the fertilizer, and they do all this, and they never test their soil. And, right. and, and, and it can they, flop. And, and it can absolutely flop. I've seen and then it you're going to go blame the seed yeah. or the now, fertilizer. Well, that seed yeah. didn't have anything to do with it. It didn't have That's anything right. to do with it. You've got, if you don't have the soil right before you do it, you're wasting your time. So. Carla, let me ask you this. If, if a guy was, uh, say I was going to put a four acre food plot and I was going to make it continuous, you know, it'll all be in one four acre blue deal, and I wanted to separate from this and this and this, do you need soil samples from like, I want to take this first half acre and I want to put in brassicas? Mm -hmm. Then I need a soil sample for that, don't I? Correct. Then if I'm going to take this next, and I can stake it off, this next half acre, I'm going to plant radishes. Yep. I need a soil sample for that. Absolutely. And then take the balance and I'm going to put some of this My Blend Deer Mineral uh, Fall Food Block. I'll just make the rest of it that. I still need a soil sample for that. That is correct. The way the land moves, I mean, their nutrition level in the land, it changes drastically. A lot of people don't understand that and they think, oh, it's been great over the years. I'll have great luck with it again. Then they come through and they have a low yield and they're thinking, what's going on? Why did, why did this not work this year? You know, whenever things diminish, you need other things to replenish them. And if you want to have a successful food plot, you better get to that soil sample. Everybody at the co-op is educated mm -hmm. on food plots and stuff like that, and what deer like and what deer don't like and stuff like that. When you came on a minute ago, you said you need to have a game plan. I yep. agree, Absolutely. totally need to have a game plan. Will you help them design, uh, design a game plan if they were to come into the co-op and say, hey, I'm lost, I'm brand new, I just want to plant something and I want to draw deer. And I want to draw them for, from Q's place and from Brandon's place, <laughs> you know. Uh, Y'all will help them out. They don't realize that that's what you're there for. Yeah, absolutely. You know, we have people come in all the time, they're like, I'm getting into it, I'm not sure, my buddy tells me this and such and such tells me this. We get that soil test and I'm like, okay, you know, this is, here's a variety. I like to give them opportunity to choose what they would like to do. So I send them a few different paths and then we come down and I'm saying, what do you really want to attract? What's your goal in this? What do you want to get out of it? That's what it all bases down to, but it's all based around the customer's wants.
That's what it's all about, ladies and gentlemen. It's just what you want and what you want to do and what, how you want to attract them is the most important thing. Let's do our product of the week, if you don't mind. There, all right. Now. This week's product of the week has been brought to you by our good friends at Caney Fork Outdoors. Uh, go up there and give them a shout. Go see them at the Big Rock Market up there on the Caney Fork River. Or you can come down here and see Ryan uh, in Donaldson. And here it is at Old uh, Donaldson Plaza. And, uh, you know, come give, give them a shout. We'll actually be up there next weekend. Yep. Or I'll be up there in two weekends, I'm sorry. Yep. Uh, so if you see us down there, say hey. But make sure to go give them a holler, whether you're wanting to, to rent for a weekend or if you're wanting to buy, you know, new kayaks, whatever hey, it is. They, they can got help demos you out either on way. sale, and they got, they're, they're turning their inventory, so yeah. there's sales it's going on It's a good time to go right. see them right it's now. It's a great time it to go is. see them. Hey, what we've got here is a sniper hunting products. And, you know, sometimes, and, and James, you can help me out here, sometimes, Times you can't put those straps in the right place or oh, yeah. trees kind of leans over this way and you really need a trail camera you have fixed the problem brother yeah, you, no more putting a stick behind the strap yeah. or, or <laughs> trying to find the right spot you know now you can screw that in any tree any fence post anywhere you want to put it uh you can put it any 10, wall? <laughs> yeah, you can put it 10 12 foot up in the tree that's a good and angle it down so when people <laughs> when people are walking through the woods they're naturally not looking uh, oh, they're looking yeah. down to see where they're walking so they don't trip. So if you got a trespasser coming in on your property or for home security, yeah. mounted up high, angled down, up in a tree where somebody walking through is not going to see it. The good thing about our cellular trail cameras is it's sending all the pictures to your cell phone so you don't have to climb back up there and check no. it. Yeah. All the pictures are coming right to your cell phone. And this little device, you could get this through your your website, yeah, or and our hopefully here very shortly through Davidson Farmers Co-op, <laughs> we fix we fix to seal this deal. But uh, I, I promise you, ladies and gentlemen, one of these, get you two or three of these. Uh, carry your cameras out there if you got five or six cameras. These will always come in handy for moving it where you need them to be at that moment. And remember. Deer change their movements. They're going to go pretty soon mm -hmm. out of their summer into their fall. I promise you that moon phase and the cool temperatures are going to drive them that way. You're going to want to check those cameras and make sure you put them in the right place. If you don't have a, a tree, we also make a T-post mount. That's you right. can drive a T-post anywhere you want to drive it. You know, That's they're right. very cheap. Uh, a lot of our customers uh, use T-post and like uh, lakes or water holes where they duck hunt. Yeah, that's and right. They'll use our cameras to monitor duck holes from hours away that's just awesome. to know if they need to go duck hunt. That's great. I'll tell you what, check them out, sniperhuntingproducts.com. Hey, we got to take a quick break and visit some of our fine sponsors. We'll be right back with more Southern Woods and Waters.